In 1918, the Spanish flu killed more than 50 million people worldwide. But the most shocking detail wasn't just the scale, it was who died. Unlike almost every other flu outbreak, it wasn't the elderly or the infants who filled the graves. It was young adults in their 20s and 30s, soldiers, nurses, and workers in the prime of life. For decades, scientists were baffled. Why did the strongest, healthiest members of society collapse while many weaker ones survived? That puzzle remained unsolved for almost a century. Only recently have researchers uncovered the disturbing truth. So what secret inside the human body turned youth into a deadly risk? The Spanish flu didn't just spread fast. It behaved differently from almost any influenza outbreak in history. Hospitals in Europe, America, Asia, all reported the same shocking trend. Men and women in their 20s and 30s collapsing within hours, gasping for breath, and dying within days. Doctors of the time had no explanation. They blamed bad air, exhaustion from war, or even poison gas. But none of those theories matched the strange reality. The virus hunted the healthiest. So the central mystery remains, why did the Spanish flu kill young adults while sparing many children and older people? To answer that, we need to look at a surprising detail that overturned all expectations. Normally, influenza is most deadly at the edges of life, the very young and the very old. Doctors expect a U-shaped curve of deaths with children and the elderly most at risk, while young adults usually recover. But in 1918, the curve was different. It looked like a W. That middle peak showed the shocking truth. People in their 20s and 30s were dying at extraordinary rates. Healthy workers, teachers, and soldiers, the ones who should have survived, filled hospital wards. For families, it was devastating. Parents died while their children lived. Grandparents survived while sons and daughters were buried. Why was strength itself turning into a deadly weakness? In 1918, the world was still at war. Millions of young men crowded into trenches, barracks, and troop ships. These close quarters became breeding grounds for infection. Within days, fit recruits were struck down. Their lips turned blue, their lungs filled with fluid, and they drowned in their own bodies. But it wasn't only soldiers. In cities, healthy workers, teachers, and nurses fell just as quickly. Families lost parents in a single week, leaving children in the care of grandparents who somehow survived. The pattern was unmistakable. The very people expected to endure were the first to die. What clues did doctors find in the autopsies of these victims? Doctors at the time performed hurried autopsies, trying to understand what was happening inside the bodies. What they found was shocking. The lungs of young victims weren't just infected, they were destroyed. They were heavy filled with blood and fluid, almost unrecognizable. Some compared them to the lungs of people who had drowned. A few medical reports hinted that the damage seemed too extreme to be caused by the virus alone. Something else was happening, something that turned the body against itself. But with limited tools, doctors couldn't prove it. The evidence was noted, then largely forgotten. So what explanations did scientists try to offer before modern research gave the real answer? Early explanations focused on the world around the victims, not the virus itself. Some blamed poison gas from the war, which scarred soldiers' lungs. Others pointed to poor hygiene in crowded camps or malnutrition from years of rationing. These factors surely made things worse, but they didn't explain why the healthiest group, young adults, died in the greatest numbers. Even decades later, historians and doctors were left guessing. Was it stress, exhaustion, or exposure to earlier illnesses? None of these ideas fully fit the deadly pattern. The mystery remained unsolved. It would take modern science and the recovery of the actual virus to reveal the true cause. Decades after the pandemic, scientists returned to the mystery with new tools. In Alaska, bodies of flu victims had been buried in permafrost, their lungs preserved by ice. From these remains, researchers were able to extract fragments of the 1918 virus's genetic code. Piece by piece, they rebuilt it in the lab. For the first time, scientists could see how this flu was different from others. Modern virology and powerful computers revealed the virus's hidden weapons. Its structure, its proteins, its behavior inside cells, all could finally be tested. If you're finding this fascinating, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the rest. The search was over the real culprit was ready to be exposed.
So what was the hidden mechanism that turned youth into a deadly risk? The answer shocked researchers. The virus itself was deadly, but the true killer was the body's own defense system. Young adults had the strongest immune systems, and in 1918, that strength turned against them. When the virus entered the lungs, it triggered an overreaction called a cytokine storm. Instead of carefully targeting the infection, the immune system flooded the lungs with signals that summoned waves of white blood cells. These cells attacked not only the virus, but also healthy tissue. The result was catastrophic. Blood vessels leaked, the lungs filled with fluid, oxygen levels crashed, victims suffocated within days, sometimes within hours. And the cruel twist was this, the healthier the immune system, the fiercer the storm. That's why strong young adults, soldiers, workers, parents, died in such enormous numbers, while children and older adults with weaker immune responses often survived. The mystery of the W-shaped death curve was finally explained. It wasn't weakness that killed the young, it was their very strength. But how exactly did this storm unfold inside the body, step by step? The process began the moment the virus entered the lungs. It attached to cells deep in the airways and multiplied rapidly. Normally, the immune system sends a measured response, enough to attack the virus without harming the body. But in 1918, something went wrong. The immune system released an extreme flood of cytokines, chemical signals that call for reinforcements. In young adults, those signals were overwhelming. White blood cells poured into the lungs, releasing toxins and enzymes. Instead of precision, it became chaos. Blood vessels ruptured, tissue broke down, fluid and dead cells filled the air sacs. Within hours, breathing became nearly impossible. The body, in effect, drowned itself while trying to fight back. Older adults with weaker immune reactions didn't trigger the same storm, and many survived because their defenses were slower, not stronger. What happened next as this storm ripped through entire societies? The cytokine storm didn't just kill individuals, it tore through entire communities. In military camps, rows of young soldiers gasped for breath together, some dying within hours of their first cough. Hospitals overflowed with patients in their 20s and 30s, the very age group normally expected to survive. Families were shattered, parents died, leaving children in the care of grandparents. In some towns, so many young adults perished that schools closed, Farms went untended, and factories shut down. Even armies were weakened. Soldiers collapsed not from bullets, but from their own immune systems gone wild. The human cost was almost impossible to measure. The war had already drained nations, and the flu struck down the very generation meant to rebuild. But what meaning does this discovery hold for us today, more than a century later? The discovery of cytokine storms didn't just close a historical case. It reshaped medicine, in 1918, no one knew the immune system could kill as effectively as the virus itself. Today, that knowledge saves lives. When COVID-19 spread, doctors quickly recognized a familiar pattern. Some patients weren't dying from the virus alone, but from their immune systems going into overdrive. Treatments like steroids and immune modulating drugs were used to calm the storm, an approach built directly on lessons from 1918. It also changed how we think about health. For decades, people believed a strong immune system was always better. But the Spanish flu showed that too much strength, unleashed without control, can be deadly. Balance is what truly matters. Understanding why young adults died in such huge numbers has given science a warning sign for future pandemics. Every new outbreak carries unknown risks. But thanks to 1918, we know where to look. So how can we tie this lesson back to the haunting image of youth cut down in their prime? In 1918, the strongest became the most vulnerable. The Spanish flu turned the body's best defense into its greatest weakness. Young adults, soldiers, nurses, workers, parents, died not because they were frail, but because their immune systems fought too hard. That discovery changed medicine forever. It reminds us that survival isn't only about strength. It's about balance, timing, and understanding our own biology. This hidden truth connects past and present. The Spanish flu still speaks to us, warning that the fiercest battles are sometimes fought inside our own bodies. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want more hidden history uncovered. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
Share them in the comments below.